Hi everyone, it's Elisa from Photobox Designs, and this is going to be a quick and simple tutorial on how to edit templates in Photopea. Photopea is an online, free online editor, very similar to Photoshop, but it is free. And I'm going to show you how to edit our templates, pretty simple templates in this online editor. editor. So the first thing you're gonna do is go to www.photopea.com. Hope I'm saying that correctly. And when you open it up, you're going to get an interface like this. It is completely free. So you can click on new project, open from computer, PSD templates, or drop a file anywhere. I'm just going to open from computer. <clears throat> and I'm going to go to the to one of my templates. This is a Valentine's Day template that we sell at our shop, photoboxdesigns.com. And I'm just gonna click open. And now you'll see that this editor is very, looks, if you're a Photoshop user, it's very, very similar to Photoshop. But of course you have uh, ads on the side, but that's okay. You'll see that this editor has um, a lot of the same tools as Photoshop and it has a layers panel just like Photoshop, but I'm going to focus on the non Photoshop user. This is wonderful for Photoshop users who maybe on the fly need to edit something. And now you have this option online, but for non Photoshop editors, this is a very simple template to use. And I'm going to show you how to edit using this without explaining all the details of this platform, just the things that you'll need to know. So when you open up the template, you'll see here, this is called the layers panel. It's all on the right. It has all the different layers that are involved in this template. So for example, it says on the right hand side, T that's a text layer. You can click on the eyeball and it'll turn it off and it'll turn it on. If I turn it off, clicking on eyeballs always turn things on and off. I can click on the other text that I have, which is save the date. I also have this text here, which is Mark and Susie. When you see text, it also means that you are able to edit the text. Now, of course, if you don't have the same font that I have, then you'll have to replace it or you'll have to download the font first. So one way that you would edit the font was, is that you can click right on the layer. Oh, uh, before we even get started on that, you'll see at top, it says here, transformation controls and distances. You should click these, especially the transformation controls. You want to click those on distances. You may not need. That's just, if you want to move things around in your template and you want to know how far apart they are from each other, we could turn that off, but it's good to know about. Transformation controls are pretty important because that is one way for you to easily select things in your template. See if I'm going to select this button right here, uh, this uh, gray sheet right here. This is your clipping mask. It automatically jumped right here in my layers panel to clipping mask. If I turned off the transformation control and I click on the text, it does go to it, but it doesn't give me any ability to uh, resize it. Okay. So if I put my transformation control back on and I click on, let's say this gray mask again, you'll see, I now have transformation tools, which is this blue box around the gray mask. And it gives me that option to now stretch it out, make it smaller, move it around much easier. Okay, I don't want to do that. If you like what you've done, you can click the check mark. If you don't, it'll press the X, it'll go back to the way it was, which is what I want to do. Anytime you make a mistake, you can look at your history, which is all up on the very top. So if you've done something you don't like, such as I'll put that right there. I don't like that. All I have to do is go to my history and go backwards. I This is move, meaning I move this gray piece go backwards in my history and it'll take me back to where I just was previously. So when you open up this template, you'll see that I have some text. I also have some text words like the word love. I've now clicked on it. 
it goes down to the background it, because it was selecting it, it thought I was selecting the background but I would really want to select this word love here now I've clicked uh, a little more precisely on this word love but you'll see that love does not have the T symbol it means that love is not text it's just a clip art image so you won't be able to edit the font or edit the words but you could always turn it off using that little eyeball and replace it with your own text if you like going back to the text let me quickly show you how to do that so i have save the date on top if i want i can turn off i can uh, click on save the date right i clicked right on it see it it highlighted it in my in my layers panel i can click save the date I can double click on it and that's opening up my text tool. If you look to the left, you'll see type or text tool and I could change it. I just highlighted it by double clicking on it and I can change it to love forever. And, ever. and that's great. Uh, you'll notice that the font changed a little bit and that is because this uh, file editor, this Photopea probably doesn't have the same font installed. So it found something that was pretty close to it. If I go down to Mark and Susie, I change the name. Love Smiths, the Smith family. Again, it is not the same font that it was before, but that's because this font is not installed in here. And so therefore it finds something similar to it. Again, if I didn't like my changes, I go back up to my history tool and I can go step backwards, step backwards, step backwards, step backwards, scrolling down. I'm going to step backwards again and I move back to where I was before I started changing the font. You can also just turn off the font, go to the type tool on the left side, click on that type tool. And then you could start typing. Hello and how are you? Check mark. My transformation tools are go up here. This is your move tool. Click on this. I'm going to move it over here. And if I double highlight it again, if I click, double click it and highlight the whole thing or just highlight it, I can go up to here. This is where all your fonts are. And I could play around and change my font. Now, if you would like to use a specific font that is not installed, you could go back to type tool. See up here, this is where we're using the Aileron font. You can go to load font. And if you have a font file already loaded up in your computer, you can load up the font. Let's see, I happen to have uh, <clears throat> I have this sole signature already here. So I'm just going to click on that and open it and it's going to load it up for me. And now my font sole signature is there. I'm going to double click on hello, how are you? And I'm going to look for sole signature. I guess I could just type it in the, there it is. And now it has changed my font. And you can always also, again, highlight and change the size of your font. You can type it right in here as well. 300, make it really big. That's a little bit too big. Maybe 200, and that changes up your font. You can also click on your font, which opens up the transformation tool. And I'm, I went here for the move tool, clicking on it, and then I could always also resize my font by using the move tool as long as my transformation controls are already turned on. Okay, so that is how you can change and edit your font. If you don't like any of the clip art that is not built into the background, such as the word love, these little hearts. I try very hard to make sure that everything's labeled beautifully in all my templates. I've got the tape here, some more tape here, the airplane got this in the air, which is not a font, which is clip art. The only thing that on this template that you cannot shut off is the background. 
these hearts on top and on the bottom are all part of the background. So let's turn everything back on. I'll turn this one off and we'll just call it Happy Valentine's Day. So if you are going to now add a photo in any of the templates that you're going to add a photo to it, what you're going to do is you're going to look on the right hand side and you're going to see clipping mask. There is, this is a clipping mask and this is where you're going to put your photo. I tend, but not always to make my templates with a clipping mask that is gray, but it really doesn't matter the color. You can just clip it right into anything. So I'm going to click on clipping mask down here. Then I'm going to go to file, open and place. This is very similar to Photoshop, open and place, find the image that you want to bring into your template. So let's just say we want to bring this one in over here, press open. Okay. So now your, your image is in, but it's not clipped in. So all you have to do now is see, make sure that I, this is the pexels. This is the image that I just brought in new image. I'm just going to, if you can see, this is the new image that I just brought in. I right clicked on it just to make this a little more obvious. I'm going to change the color so you can see new image. You always need your image in the layers panel to be above the clipping mask. If you want to clip it, you also need your image to be above the clipping mask on the image as well. I'm going to be on my new image. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to say clipping mask. And now your image has been clipped into this gray mask. You can also grab it and drag it around to re to, you can move it around inside the mask. You can resize it by grabbing, whoops, by grabbing the, the edges of your, it's not finding the edge. Okay. <clears throat> I can make this a little bit larger if I want different, uh, the image to be a little larger inside and I can just grab it and drag it. That's okay. I was able to do all of that very easily because my transformation control is on. Let me show you what will happen now. If we were to do this again, I'm going to right click on it, unclip it. And if I were to move it up above, let's say the tape. Okay. See how it is now above this word tape, which is uh, above this tape over here. I'm going to right click clipping mask. I've now essentially have taken this photo clip and, and stuck it inside this piece of tape right here. Obviously that's not what I want to do, but that's what I have done. And I can move see there they are. So what a clipping mask really is, and all it is, is that you're taking one image and you're clipping it into the parameters of another image below it. So obviously I do not want the image inside the piece of tape. I'm going to move it back down to this clipping mask. I'm going to just grab it and drag it because my transformation controls are on. If I turn my transformation controls off, I can still drag it and move it, but I won't be able to resize it without, because I lost the little square. Okay. So I put my transformation controls on and then I can resize it. And that's really it. So if you ever get a template from me and it has more than one clipping mask, you're just going to follow this exact same uh, procedure. And you're going to clip all of your images inside all of the different clipping masks that you would like the image to be placed into. The last thing you're going to do when you're ready to export it because you're ready to print is you're going to uh, well, there's many different options. You can, you could just save it. You can export it as a JPEG, which is how I probably would, um, do it. You could also export it as any of these and export JPEG. I like my quality to be at a hundred so that I get the full size. I'm going to say save and I'm going to find, uh, Right now it's just putting me into, um, downloads. 
You can also always rename it. This is, I'm going to call this Photokia sample. Save it. All right. And you, as an example, you can see you can open up your JPEG. And there it is, a full-size JPEG. And that's really it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And I hope it was easy for you to uh, use the template. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me about any of the templates that you see here, about any help, if you need any help with putting your photos in or changing the text, I'd be happy to help you. You can contact me uh, at support at photoboxdesigns.com or you can contact me through the Etsy messenger. Thanks again. Have a great day.